Welcome back to my channel. Sorry it's been a while since I've posted anything, so I'm just gonna do a quick five minute or so update. So, you know, you haven't got to sit here for ages while I waffle on. Um, in this video, I'm just gonna to talk to you a little bit about my kitchen design, something I've been pondering for a long time, as you can imagine, but it's a very important part of the build. So in the background, you'll see that we're all drywalled now, we're just having it all tapered jointed, we're halfway through that. This area we've just completed and um, they'll be coming in here next week. Got a really good drywaller, he was recommended to me by two separate people, uh, totally unconnected, so that's always a good sign. And he's a generally decent guy, Kevin his name is, and he has been working really hard this week and he's done I suppose about 60-70% of it all the rest of the house and he's just going to come in here. So in the background you'll see that we've got some walls here which we've got MDF on. Now that MDF is to enable me to have a really good fixing for my kitchen units. So um, there's predominantly three areas for kitchen units. There's the big wall immediately behind me, there's the other wall at the far end, the green MDF. They're both moisture resistant for some reason. The 15mm which is on that wall came in in brown and that one came in in green. Um, but I like to do that because I like to be able to fix my cabinets back without worrying about sort of, you know, getting a decent fixing and all the rest of it. Now the idea is that that MDF is within the area of the kitchen, so the units bleed past in the height and the width. So when we put the final finishes on, once the units are in and the sort of mirror backs are on, etc., you don't see any of that MDF. But it's just a really good material to fix to, to mark on. Um, and establish a really good base for your kitchen. Now, the kitchen is going to be handmade by me, and when I say handmade by, hand by me, some of the components I get made by uh, different people, but I pull it all together. So it's totally unique. Um, we've got all various appliances, as you can imagine. So we've got three ovens, we've got a hob, dishwasher, wine cooler, coffee machine. Um, all kinds of pull out drawers and bins and that sort of stuff so it's all been designed so today I've spent all day drawing a scale drawing to take off to the different manufacturers who are making me bits and pieces and um, behind me you'll see I've got reams of paperwork on here and my iPad which I'm doing all my research because if you design a kitchen you'll know that all the apertures for all the units especially the integrated stuff has to be absolutely cock on and you need to know all of that in advance. So behind me on the wall here, on my drawing board, you'll see the main run of units there. And you also see there's another section there behind me. This is really difficult getting this camera in the right place, um, which has got a tall fridge, freezer, coffee machine, wine machine. So that sort of bank of units looks like a big dresser. And that's gonna be where I go for drinks, etc. And then there's the island unit there as well. So you see one side with the drawers and the oven and the other side with some open shelving. And we're having like a live edge timber table which wraps around it as well. So that would be really interesting, something that um, is quite fashionable at the moment. When I say live edge, it's sort of like um, a slab of timber and the edge is just literally had the bark taken off it and that would be highly polished with um, a lacquer. Anyway, so, when I design the kitchen, there's a lot of things to think about. For example, power. Every single appliance needs to have its own isolation or a fuse spur. And so each one of that has to have a leg of power going back to a main position where everything is isolatable. Now I do all of my isolation in the fuse board. There'll be a separate panel. Everything will be listed and you'll be able to just go in there and switch off each appliance that you want. Sometimes you put them locally. But where you've got, say, I've got probably 10 appliances, I'll have 10 little spurs everywhere, and that just looks a little bit um, busy. So I like to um, keep them all with the power all together, fuse boards, spurs, isolations, and all that sort of stuff. So this is, as I say, this is the kitchen area, so I'm looking back through now. So it's gonna be a kitchen and then going on to the dining area. Sorry about the light, that's just um, burning me out a bit. And then when you're in the kitchen, to go beyond the kitchen, there's going to be uh, laundry, stroke utility, which is through here. I'll have, a quick, I'll have a quick wander through. So this is where the laundry is going to be. So there's going to be another big wall of units all the way behind me here, 
going all the way through sort of washing machine, dryers, sinks and that sort of stuff, um, which is going to be really useful because I always get dirty in my work, as you can imagine. Um, I'll just get, scoot through and show you where else we've been working. So all of the jointings being done here. Just got one more coat to do on these walls and get them big rub down. I've been doing some first fixing in some of the bathrooms and that's quite a cool job because again, like a kitchen, there's a lot of planning that needs to go into it. There's lots and lots of pipe work needed to go everywhere, drains. So behind me, we've got a, a shower room, which I'm standing in, and there's an, another one back to it, and they're sort of symmetrical, so they sort of spin around, they're exactly the same. So this wall in the middle enables me to get all my services in, my drainage, and everything's just gonna be dead flush. We're gonna have cabinets which are set into the walls, which are really nice. They've got all of the integrated heat on the glass, so it doesn't steam up. Shaver points inside and that sort of stuff. LED lights around the edge, which are really cool. Um, so, it's an exciting part of the build and Roger has been over and we've been done doing lots of filming for Skill Builder. We've done a plasterboarding sort of episode which is going to come up, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. I've done all the plasterboarding myself. I'm pretty um, fussy about it. It's all got to be perfect. I put it all up with a level and a laser and there's no gaps in it, there's no bad edges. If you have a look around me, you can see we've got all of that tacked out now. 240 sheets of plasterboard we've used so far. We've got a few left to go. Anyway, keep checking back and I hope you enjoyed this little update. Sorry it's been a while. Thanks to everyone who came up to me at Tall Fair and had a chat. It's quite nice being out and about and meeting people. And also while I was there, I had a chat with the High Koki guys and one of them said to me, have you seen the new barrel jigsaw yet? We haven't got one here. And I said, oh no, I've got it. And um, I've actually got the one that they were talking about. It's been dropped off to be kindly on loan to try out and it's absolutely brilliant. So it's well worth a look if you're in the market for a new jigsaw. It's part of their sort of a multi-volt range. It is fantastic. It's got a really, really steady cut. Even if you're cutting curves in thick material, it copes with it really well. I'm um, comparing it to another jigsaw I really like, which is the Mafel. I would say that this is as good as that, except it's probably a quarter of the price. So um, keep checking back. Nice to see you all and have a good day.